Today we're going to make our extra large crochet fidget ball. Uh, it's fun to throw, it's fun to play with, and if you need to fidget we have sort of an infinity loop going on here. So if you go down to the hole in the center and you just pull the crochet out, it never ends. You can pull and pull and pull and pull and it will just keep coming and coming and coming because it is a crocheted Mobius and the colors change and it's pretty soothing uh, but also it's washable which is super helpful particularly in the plague times that we live in right now uh, because it's acrylic yarn you can just throw it in the washer in the dryer so let's take a look at what we're going to need to make our extra large crocheted fidget ball. I'm going to use Red Heart Super Saver Stripes. This is the Retro Stripe colorway, which I like for this project because it's adorable and bright and happy. And I'm going to use a four and a half millimeter hook. Now you could go a little bit bigger on the hook if you want, but two reasons. One is personally I crochet a little loose. The other is uh, if you're going to pull on this, or the recipient is going to pull on this, I want the stitching to be a little bit tight so it doesn't get all floppy and loose. So let's jump right into the stitching. Now there are a lot of instructions out there for little fidget balls, but I'm going to make a bigger one. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my slip knot and put it on my hook. Tighten that up a little bit, and then I'm going to chain 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Now I'm going to start with a row of double crochet. And to do that, I'm going to put my first double in the fourth chain from hook. One, two, three, there's my fourth chain. But what I like to do is I like to work in the back or the bar of the, uh, one, two, three, four, of the chain because I think it makes a neater edge. And the other thing I'm going to do, nah, I lied. So I'm going to work in the back or the bar all the way across. There's my bar, my bump my hump, people call it all kinds of different things. So f just a reminder on the double, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook through the back or the bar or the bump, yarn over and draw up a loop. You have three loops on your hook, one, two, three, yarn over, draw through two, twice. Let's do that again, yarn over, insert your hook in the next bump or bar. Now if you've been crocheting for a long time and you normally work in the front, you knock yourself out. If that's how you want to do it, that will work. I just find this to give a neater edge. So I'm going to do this all the way across and at the end of this, counting that turning chain, I'm going to have 15 double crochets. So here I am with my first row and my 15 double crochets, counting that chain three. And this is where the magic happens. We're going to set up to crochet a Mobius. So the first thing I'm going to do is set this row up as if I was going to crochet in the round. So if you've crocheted in the round before, you would make this into a ring, join at the top of the stitch, chain your three or do a standing or whatever and roll. However, we want a Mobius and a Mobius is a mathematical unit that only has one side, not two. So to get that started, I'm going to do a 180 degree turn. I'm going to take the bottom of the work and put it towards the top. So you can see already, do you see the twist? There's just one twist in there. So I'm going to grab the bottom of that chain three and join. I'm going to chain three, or you can make a standing stitch, whatever floats your little happy boat, two, three. I'm going to put my stitch marker in the top of that chain three so that I know where the beginning of the round is. A 
especially this first round, it can be a little tricky and it's possible that you're not going to see immediately. So then I'm going to put two more double crochets in that same space. And now I'm going to put three double crochets in each double crochet working across the bottom. So that'll be 15 times. So that was my chain. Here's my next right there. Do you see it? There's my next stitch to work in. And again, it's really super easy to see because I put that first row in the back or the bump. Now this is going to start to ruffle up and be fluffy and that is exactly what we want. So I'm going to put three double crochets in each of the bottom of the stitches of my first row and then I'm going to come back and show you what we're going to do next. So I'm coming up to the last stitch where I can work in the bottom of that first double crochet row. That's one, two, three, so now I have 45 double crochets, but I'm not finished my round yet. So this is, let me get that tail out of the way. So this is where we were. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that work fall away from me. So there's my mark stitch. It's going to fall away from me. And I'm going to put three stitches in each of the top of row, of row one. Because remember, we started in the bottom. So we're going to go one, two, three and we're going to keep going all the way around. So the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, you may have heard me earlier, I started to say something and then I went, oh no, I lied. I originally, when I do these with a single crochet middle, which I do for the teeny ones, I like to weave over a uh, crochet over the tail so I don't have to do it, but uh, so I don't have to deal with it later. Uh, but for these taller ones that have the double crochets in the middle, I like to leave the tail so I can tighten that up. I can use that tail, put it on a tapestry needle, go right in here and tighten that up so I don't have a gap. So uh, you're going to want to do that sooner than later because as this thing gets bigger and fluffier, it's going to be hard to get your little fingers in there and see what's going on. But again, same deal. I'm putting three double crochets in each double crochet, but now I'm working in the top of row one, whereas when I started this round, I was working in the bottom of the row one. Now, moving forward, there is no top or bottom. It's going to just be one enormous round, and we'll look at that a little more closely in a minute. Let me just get some more double crochets in here. Here I am coming up to the last naked <laughs> stitch before my stitch marker two, three. Now I'm going to join to where the stitch marker is and then I want to show you some things and then we'll move on to the next round. So I'm just joining with a slip stitch. So here is my Mobius. Now, if I was making a small one for a child or for somebody to keep in their pocket, I would have made my center smaller and I could have ended right here and I could have used scrap yarn, etc., etc., etc. But the one we're working on today is bigger. So that's why we have so much space going on here. But it's really easy for you to see how the crochet can go through and just be twisty, twisty, twisty. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about, again, is this round, this idea of the Mobius that it only has one side. So there's my tail that I'm going to weave in off camera. I'm going to just weave it in right there to close up that little gap. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain three, put two double crochets in that first one, and put three in each one around. Again, to let it ruffle, to let it get bigger, to let it fill more of that space. But I want you to look where my fingers are going. This is one round all the way around. So just watch. I've got my fingers going here. I'm stitching here. 
I'm stitching here and as I stitch it's going to sort of orient itself in the right place. I'm going to keep stitching, I'm going to keep stitching, I'm going to keep stitching and look I'm all the way back to the beginning. So it's one giant round. There's no top and bottom, there's no one side or the other side, there's just the uh, just the one side that goes all the way around. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to chain three, put two doubles here, three in each one around. I'm going to put a marker in this chain when I'm finished with it to make sure I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to put three in each all the way around. And then we're going to come back and take a look and see how that looks. Here we are at the end of that last round. And once again, you can see how the crochet pulls through the center. And you can just play with it to infinity and beyond. Uh, but I wanted a more of a ball shape. So I'm going to put one more row of double crochets. Pardon me, round. One more round of double crochets. So we're going to go ahead and join our round. And we're going to replace that stitch marker in a little bit. And then chain three or do a standing, whatever makes your heart happy. And then you're going to put two more double crochet in that stitch and then three double crochet in each stitch round much like we did on the last round and then we're going to move forward and look at the edge. So I went ahead and I put one more round with three double crochet in each double crochet again working all the way around my Mobius. So let's take a look at the mechanics of this before we go on to the bitter end. There's my 15 double crochets in the middle and then it's one, two, three rounds with three double crochet in each double crochet. So last thing I want to talk about, here's my round join. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, I like to, now you can be done here if you want. You can weave in that end and call it, you know, join the round, weave in the end, call it done. That would be totally okay. But I like to put an edging on them when they're this big, again, just because you want it to last for a while, you don't want it to wear out. And there's a lot of tension on these outer edges. So you have three choices. One is just slip stitch in each one around. Just makes the edge a little tighter, gives you a little more color interest. So that's a choice. Another choice is to put a pico edge, in which case you chain three, one, two, three, slip stitch in the first chain that you made, and then slip stitch in the next two stitches, and do it again. One, two, three, slip stitch in that first chain, slip stitch in the next two, one, two. So that gives you a little pico edge there that you can have. Um, the alternative, I wouldn't normally turn this, but I want to just turn it real quick for the sake of speed. And the last thing you could do is, of course, crab stitch, which is when you single crochet and you hold your hook in the yarn in the same way you normally would, but you stitch in each stitch before the one you just worked on. Now, I don't love the crab stitch for this, because it's a little bulky. I think personally I'm just going to go with the slip stitch edge for this one in particular. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have fun making your crochet fiddle ball. There's my crab stitch edge. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, yada yada yada. You can always zip over to the blog to find written patterns. Uh, but thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate y'all. Bye!